Hello friends, it's time to do a little bit more CircuitPython programming on the CPX. And in this video, we're going to learn about dot notation. We're going to learn how we can access and change the color on individual NeoPixels. They're referred to as the pixels. Those are the 10 little lights that exist on the CPX. And we're also going to learn about how we can identify RGB colors. And then afterward, we're going to have an exercise so you can turn pixels on individually and then turn them off individually and go back and forth in a neat little animation. So with that, Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first line that we add in any CircuitPython code that we use in the Circuit Playground Express is this one right here from Adafruit underscore Circuit Playground dot Express import CPX. Now, again, there's a lot there, but just remember to paste that in or retype it in as the first line in all of your Circuit Playground Express CircuitPython code. Now this line of code here lets us refer to our CPX just by using the term CPX. And the CPX contains lots of different things. It's got sensors, lights, buttons. It can also perform a lot of action. So we can report sensor results, which is an output. We can show colors where we put an input in there and say, hey, show this RGB color. We can detect a button press as well. Now, not to load you up with too much programming terminology at this stage, but we would refer to the CPX as being an object. And objects can contain other objects. So, for example, our CPX contains a bunch of those pixels. They can have attributes, and um, they can also have actions associated with them. Now, you can refer to the objects and attributes as sort of being the nouns that are associated with an object, and the actions are known as methods, and you can think of these as being the verbs that are associated with a particular object. Now, if that seems dense, what we really need to focus in on this time is if we need to access any of the nouns or the verbs that are associated with our CPX object, we can use this stuff called dot notation. And we've already typed this out before. So this is a line of code that we wrote in our first Python program. It was cpx.pixels.fill. And then inside the first set of parentheses, we had a second set of parentheses and we had an RGB value in here, which said essentially fill all of the pixels in the CPX to the color red. And we can break this apart by taking a look and saying, okay, the CPX part here refers to in the CPX object. And then the dot notation here goes to pixels. And it says access all of the pixels. And then the fill piece here says, hey, perform the fill action here and fill it in with a color equal to. And then the last bit we have in here is red 255, green zero, and blue zero. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about this dot notation here. We're just really creating a chain where we can go ahead and and find uh, the different things that are related to a particular object and either get data from it or change uh, attributes of the object or get it to do something for us. And so let's get it to do something, which is in this case, we're gonna access the individual pixels or the individual lights. So when we refer to pixels or NeoPixels, we're talking about the different lights on the CPX. Now, previously what we did was we said cpx.pixels and then we used the dot fill method. And we said, hey, fill all the pixels in with this RGB value or you know, essentially three numbers that represent a color. Now, um, the different pixels uh, on a CPX, there are 10 of them and they're numbered from zero to nine. And actually starting a numbering system is at zero is really common in um, you know most programming languages that you'll deal with oftentimes it's referred to as zero indexing so um, what we're going to do now is we are going to refer to those different individual pixels so the very first one is going to be zero and the tenth one is going to be nine we're going to put them inside of brackets as you see here now this business with the brackets, uh, this is actually referred to as an array. What we're essentially saying is, hey, this thing that's called pixels here, it has uh, a bunch of different elements inside of it. And in our case here, we have 10 elements numbered from zero to nine, and we can refer to each of those individual elements. And in this case, they're each of the individual lights by a number inside of brackets. And note that these are square brackets here. So those are definitely different from curly brackets or from parentheses. You wanna absolutely make sure that you're using square brackets. So this can be really handy. You could have a list of students, which is numbered from zero to um, one minus the, the number of students in class. Um, and uh, you know you can refer to each individual student if uh, you've got the index number in here for that particular student. So what we are going to do here is we're going to go through all of our individual NeoPixels, or not all of them, but we'll go from uh, the first six. So that's zero to five. And we're going to set these pixels to different colors. So the first one, which is pixel zero, light to zero, we're going to set to 
255, 0, and 0, which is red. And then we're going to do another one, which is 255, 255, 0, which will give us yellow. And uh, we're going to type this in right now. And this is what the results should be on our Circuit Playground Express. And so this is where the 0th pixel is, the first one in our list. We go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 down here. This is 5. If we continued, we'd have 6, 7, 8, and then 9 would be our 10th pixel right there. So now let's go ahead and write this code and see what it does. So we'll hop into our mu editor here. I've already plugged in my uh, Circuit Playground Express, and I see Circuit Pi shows up here, so it's it's definitely attached. And what you can't see is it's actually flashing away with the last code that I did. And so now I'm going to click on Mu to open this up and launch the Mu editor. And what it does is it actually will load the code off of your Circuit Playground Express if it's plugged in. If you don't have your Circuit Playground Express plugged in, it will actually say, "Hey, there's no Circuit Playground Express plugged in." Now, if you wanted to, you could click on Load and load some code that exists from. Um, uh, that, that you saved on your desktop. But what we're going to do here is sort of this equivalent of a save as. Uh, what I'd like you to do is if you just double click where it says code.py, this is going to allow you to give it a new name and to resave this. So I'm going to double click on code.py. Notice this is loaded in off of CircuitPython, so my Circuit Playground Express. That's why this is what's showing up here. It says, hey, that's the volume, um, the last volume that this was accessed from. But what I want to do is I want to go to my desktop now. Remember, I created a folder where I was saving all of my files called CPX um, Python code files. I'm going to click on this and uh, what I'm going to call this file for now at least is going to be, um, let's see, flash underscore individual underscore pixels. And we'll eventually rename this as code.py too, but I want to save this uh, right here on the desktop just so that I've got a, another example of it. So here we go. And what's nice about this is I know, and by the way, why don't I change my comment line up here as well? So I'm just going to call this uh, flash individual pixels. Now, um, I know I want to start my code uh, by using this from statement in here, which essentially sets up a, a Circuit Playground Express object that we can call CPX. And I also want to import time. And I also want to have this forever loop equivalent, the while true colon in here. So I'm just going to get rid of everything that I had before after um, the while true colon, just press enter there, make sure that I've still got my indentation. And then I'm going to type the code that we were talking about previously. So if I say CPX dot, and then I can say pixels, and then open square bracket. Um, and again, you want to make sure that that's a square bracket. That's what's right next to the P on uh, the US keyboard. And I'm going to say zero here to start up our, our first pixel. Um, and then I'm going to close the bracket there. And you know what, I'm going to make the font a little bit larger by doing uh, the shift command plus, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, shift command plus on, on my Mac, just so you could see this a bit better. And uh, again, the way that we set the color for these individual pixels is we just set the number in this index value in here, uh, inside of the brackets, we say, hey, that's the pixel we want to deal with inside of our array. And now we give an RGB value. So our RGB value should be in between two parentheses. If I want my first one to be red, I'll say 255 comma space zero comma space zero. I'm going to press enter here. And uh, I can also say for the next one there, CPX dot pixels and this is going to be pixel number one which is our second light and why don't we do 255 comma space 255 comma space zero here and this is going to I'll even put in a little comment after with a um, number sign and I'll say sets pixel one to yellow then we'll do cpx dot pixels uh, and this will be two and we'll say this one is going to equal to zero comma 255 comma um, zero and again I've got spaces after my commas here and I'll do a star and I'll say or I'm sorry a um, number sign here and I'll say uh, sets pixel two to green and you know if I want to do this even faster what I can do is I can just grab these three values command C I can paste down here and I can just edit these lines now instead of um, having to type them in so if I do zero one two then I go down and set this to three four and five, so this will take me through the first six pixels. And let me see, what did I want to do for pixel three? Uh, I'm going to change that to zero. Then uh, the green value is going to be 255, and the blue value is going to be 255. And uh, um, I will say in here a comment uh, sets pixel to aqua. And then four is going to be um, just zero, and then zero, and then 255 and that sets pixel um, I should say three up here and then this one sets pixel four 
to blue. And then uh, what I'll do for pixel five is if I set them all to 255, what that's gonna do is it's going to uh, set pixel five to white or approximation of white by turning all three colors on at once. So now that I've got all of these saved, what I'm gonna do, or I don't know that I've got all of this set up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on the save button here. That's gonna save my file locally. So I've got a copy of it. I can also go ahead and do a check here, which isn't a bad idea. Um, oh, and look, it's telling me it wants two spaces before the inline comment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add spaces in here and let's see uh, it says time was imported and not used so we're eventually going to use time we can ignore that it's not going to crash our code or anything and so now when i go ahead and do a check again other than time imported but you can ignore that not used we'll use that later on uh, everything else seems like it's working now i'm going to click on save that will save it to my uh, local hard drive but now what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to just double click on um, the tab up here the flash underscore individual pixels and i am going to find my circuit pi volume here again that refers to the circuit playground express it's set up to work in circuit python and i'm going to type in code.py right in here and i'm going to save this and if you watch what's gonna happen now on your Circuit Playground Express, you should see something. Uh, once this saves, it's gonna replace the value which is here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You should see something which flashes and it looks exactly like what we'd had on this screen here. So hopefully that's what yours is looking like right now. If not, feel free to go back and compare your code to my code. And by the way, if I wanna get rid of the check, I can just click on the, the thumb to, to get rid of any of the error messages or the warning messages that are showing up. And now we're gonna have an exercise in here. So what we wanna do for the exercise is we wanna turn off on the lights uh, and then turn the, the, the lights off. We wanna do them one at a time. So you know how to address individual pixels as elements in the array using the square brackets. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to have you find a color. And let me show you how we'll go ahead and do that. Let's open up a browser. And if you type uh, RGB color pick picker into Google, um, what you'll actually see is a little color picker in here, which you can use. And you can see RGB values in here. We're not worrying about the hex values, but that's another way you can express color. But here the RGB shows the, what the red color, the green color, and the blue color is for whatever color is selected. And this is the default Google puts in. But if I click over here on red and I'm wondering, hmm, what happens if I drag up here? Oh, it shows me you know, what things would look like if this was my particular color. And maybe I want something that's a little bit more maroon. And so if I click over here, I can see what happens if I set this to different values. If you want a yellow, you can just click over here and see what these values are. So this is right in Google where you can experiment and pick different colors. Um, I find that uh, there's uh, an even better one that's available. It's RGB color code. If we click on that one, we'll load up here and you see um, you know, a bunch of different colors. Again, your RGB values for your NeoPixel, they're not super, super fine like the retina display on your Mac, um, but you can go through here and select on the various different colors. And you'll notice if, as you hover over, it will tell you what the RGB values are. And if you wanna see this a little bit better here, so you know this is, is normally what I have for my red, which is 255, zero and zero. If I click on it, it'll actually change part of the, um, the web page that I'm looking at here. But then if I wanna just move my cursor over, you can see you know what would it look like if I went to 255 128 and 0 this gives me a kind of orange in there and so you can go ahead and build your colors so now we know how to select these and by the way if you go down here after selecting any of these colors like I'm going to select this blue here uh, you can go down and you can actually see RGB values are you can move the sliders too if you want to go ahead and see what happens here if you move like the red slider way up you can see things changing over here if you click on the arrow you can see you know what that particular pink value would look like like. So now you've got lots of different ways to experiment with colors and figure out you know, which color you can grab and try to see if you can represent that in the NeoPixel. So now that you know how to do that, um, what I want you to do is I want you to write some CircuitPython code that's gonna start with pixel zero. So this one right over here, it's gonna turn it into a unique color of your choosing. Feel free to make it go through the rainbow if you want. Wait a 10th of a second. Now remember, we know how to do that with our time.sleep and we pass in a, a parameter in there that refers to the length in seconds. Then what I want you to do is to move to the next pixel, turn it a different unique color, wait a 10th of a second. And then once we're all 
all the way out here at pixel 9, then I want to wait a full second, and then I want you to move backward, turning off pixel 9, waiting a tenth of a second, turning off pixel 8, waiting a tenth of a second. And you might want to think, hmm, what would the RGB value be if I want to turn off one of these pixel lights individually? And once we get to the very last one, we've turned off 0, then I want you to wait for one second again, and then the loop should repeat itself over and over again. So that's our task, and what they should look like when you're running it is it should look something like this, depending on whatever colors you set up. So it goes forward, it goes backwards, it goes forwards, it goes backwards. Now also what I want you to do is when you save this uh, and execute it on your Circuit Playground Express, you're going to save it as code.py. But I'm going to want you to upload this to the um, exercise instructions that are listed on Canvas. And uh, for that, you should name it as your last name underscore your first name underscore uh, EX2 for that's video exercise two. So um, good luck with that. That's your exercise for this video and keep at it.